Interesting TCM and acupuncture. Part five, anatomy and physiology of the heart of the five organs and its associated characteristics, orifice, psychology, fluid, time, and relationship to the pericardium, pericardium collateral, the Chinese medicine view. The five organs are heart, liver, spleen, lung, and kidney. In the study of the channels and collaterals, the pericardium collateral is also known as part of this class. Together, these are known as the six zang organs. The five zang organs together have the physiological function of storing essence and qi, as well as being the residence of the psychological aspects of the human mind, also known as the five shen or five spirits. The five organs each have their own function, but they mutually adjust one another in the maintenance of life processes. The five organs' physiological functions relate to natural changes in the environment, and their energetic and psychological characteristics are inexorably connected. In this series, we will introduce the heart, liver, spleen, lungs and kidneys and their physiology, special functions, and physical characteristics, as well as their related orifices, emotions, fluids, and associated times. Table of contents, the heart, physiological functions and characteristics, relationship to body, orifice, psychology, fluid, and time. Part one, the heart. The heart is one of the five organs and is located in the chest, between the two lungs, and above the diaphragm. It is surrounded and protected by the pericardium, and its shape is round with a pointed bottom, similar to an unopened lotus. The principal function of the heart is to govern blood and vessels and contain the spirit. This implies that the control over blood, vessels, and spirit is related to the overall functions of all life processes in the body. Therefore, the heart is called the prince who controls the offices of government, as well as the root of life, and the leader of the five organs and six viscera. The physiological characteristic of the heart is that it is a yang organ and controls perception. The heart is the convergence point of the vessels and expressed its deep, its essence on the face. In the orifices, it is the tongue. In the emotions, it is affection. In fluids, it is sweat. The lesser yin, hand meridian of the heart, connects to the greater yang, small intestine meridian of the hand. And they have the relationship of being internal and external to one another. In the five elements, the heart is fire. It is yang in the center of yang. In nature, it connects with the energetic characteristics of summer. Part two, 
physiological functions and characteristics. The physiological functions of the heart. It controls blood vessels. The heart controls blood and vessels, meaning that the chi of the heart can adjust and control the movement of blood within the vessels, which causes them to push the blood through the body, sending forth nutrition and lubricating the inner body. The heart controlling the vessels includes not only the veins and arteries, but also the blood itself. Controlling the blood. The heart controls the blood and acts as the base where it's contained. The heart has the ability to move the blood and transfer nourishment to the entire body, including other organs and viscera, the limbs and the orifices. Every organ, viscera, sense organ, limb, bone, muscle, skin, and body hair are all connected to the heart, and each of them uses blood to obtain its nourishment. This is the basis upon which regular physiology functions to support the life of the body. Physiological functions. The blood moves through the five organs and is indispensable. So the movement of the beating of the heart is profoundly important. The heart supplies the body with strength and its frequency and strength consistently causes the circulation of blood in the entire body allowing for the nourishment of the body by the blood. If the heart chi is insufficient, the heart will lack strength. If the heart yin is insufficient, the heart will beat too fast and without power. If the heart yang is insufficient, the heart will beat slowly and without power. This will impede the circulation of the blood in the body. The heart commands the blood, and one of the main aspects of this action is to present the red blood to the body. This is related to how food and drink is transformed in the stomach and spleen and changes into the essence of water and grain. Water and grain becomes nutritional chi, and fluid and nutritional chi pass through the meridian system, arriving at the heart, where they change to red blood. The Simple Questions chapter of Differentiating Vessels and Meridians says, Turbid chi returns to the heart and its essence collects in the vessels. Tang Songhai, the author of Blood Syndromes in the Qing Dynasty, says, fire is controlled by the heart. It transforms into blood and nourishes the entire body. You can see how the heart manages the entire blood circulation of the body. If the heart is vacuous or in decline, it can lead to the obstruction of the blood. Controlling the vessels. The heart controls the vessels, which means that the heart chi moves and adjusts the movement of the heart so that it harmonizes with the arteries and veins, allowing them to extend naturally. This is how the vessels connect and how the blood travels in the body. 
the heart is directly connected to the vessels and forms a closed system. When the heart chi is sufficient, the heart can naturally regulate its movement. If the vessels are properly regulated, the blood can be delivered to every organ and every part of the body, as well as the orifices, and there is sufficient nutrition of the body by the blood, allowing people to enjoy natural life functions. In the Plain Questions chapter, Six Joints of the Organ Images talk, it says, the chi of the heart is in the vessels of the heart. This refers to how the heart and vessels harmonize blood and form a complete and independent closed system in the body. The vessels are the home of the blood and allow for blood to be grasped and carried to connect to the body. Nutritive qi moves in the center of the channels. The Ling Shu Jui Qi chapter says, when the Ying Qi collects and is restrained, it is not possible to stop it from happening. This is the work of the vessels. Authors note, this means that when the vessels contract and expand, they perform the function of circulating blood in the body. The blood and vessel normal movement is what allows for the body to be nourished by the blood and for the heart chi to enter other parts of the body. This relies on the blood to be full and harmonize the pathways of the vessels. Blood gives people's bodies organs, viscera, and sense organs their nutrition. The heart blood when nourishing, when flourishing, is the main property of the physiology of the blood and vessels. When the vessels are connected, this means the vessels, veins, and arteries will flow continuously without obstruction. When the vascular system is comfortable and relaxed, the heart chi will move in harmony and its main job is in adjusting the body. If the blood is always flowing without stop, it will always naturally circulate and the entire body system will always be supplied with sufficient nourishment. Only when the heart blood is sufficient, will the yin and yang of the heart be in harmony. The blood can then easily pass through all of the vessels and continue circulating without stop, nourishing the entire body. This makes the face have a healthy blush and moist shine, indicating that the vessels are unhurried and strong. If the qi of the heart is insufficient, yin and yang will lose their harmony and the vessels will become obstructed and disconnected, losing their elasticity. They will not be able to properly deliver the blood and the body will lose nourishment, causing palpitations, swelling, and chest pain, as well as green or purple lips. The pulse will become thin and plucky or obstructed. The heart vessels and blood have an inexorable relationship to one another and form the entire system of the physiology of the blood. The blood in the vessels normally moves and can only do so if the heart chi is sufficient. If the heart blood is sufficient, the vessels will connect and be able to carry out their functions. The normal movement of the heart is led by the physiological activity of this system. So it is said the heart controls the body's blood vessels. 
two, it contains the spirit. The heart contains the spirit is also explained as the spiritual light or spiritual mind. This describes how the heart is the commander of the organs and viscera, channels and collaterals, body and sense organs, and is the physiological controller of human vitality, mind, thought, emotion, and so on. The simple classics chapter Linglan Bi Chulun says, the heart is the prince of the senses, and from whence emerges perception. The spirit of the body can be defined broadly or specifically. The broad interpretation of spirit is the entire life system and that which commands the body. A more specific definition is that it is the vitality, mind, thought, and emotion or feeling of human beings. The heart contains the spirit means that it controls people's entire physiology and refers to the general principle of spirit. It also includes specifics such as our vitality, mind, perception, thought, emotions, and feelings. The organs and viscera, meridians and collaterals, body and sense organs each have different physiological functions, but they all rely on the heart and spirit to control, adjust, and harmonize their functions. This is why the heart and spirit control all the functions of the body. The heart and spirit, when operating properly, will allow for the body, organs, and viscera to be properly adjusted so that all is in harmony and the body is at peace and in good health. The spirit drives the chi and controls the essence. It adjusts the blood and harmonizes the essence so that they merge. The essence of the organs is called the essence of the five organs. This essence changes to the chi of the five organs and travels throughout the body controlling its functions. Because of this, the heart and spirit control each organ and viscera and have the specific objective of making the system work in harmony. The heart carries out this essential function of containing the spirit, and it is said that the heart is the great leader of the five organs and six viscera. At the same time, the heart is the organ of spiritual perception, and it controls the vitality, mental functions, thought, and emotions. The Ling Shu document, Original Spirit, says, the heart carries out all actions. The heart can interact with outside events and phenomena, and this causes a direct psychological response, which not only affects perception and thought, but also directly affects the operation of the heart organ. This is a complex element of our vital energy and is entirely under the command of the heart spirit, and also has a direct relationship with each of the five organs. The spirit in the heart also controls the senses and is the root of life, as well as the commander of the five organs and six viscera. So it directly controls whether or not the chi of the organs and viscera is stable or chaotic. The heart is therefore called the great leader of the five organs and six viscera and directly impacts the function of the vessels, giving rise to blood and harmonizing its movement and effects on the body. Each of the organs and viscera has its own physiological function, including its own physiological aspect. 
None of these can leave the operation of the blood and how it nourishes the body. And the blood and chi pass through the vascular system, arriving at the entire body and every part of the body. This is the main purpose and job of the heart. Only if the operation of the heart controlling the vessels is normal, can the entire body and all organs and viscera, orifices and sense organs properly obtain their physiological capacities in order to make the body system function correctly. If the ability of the heart to govern the blood vessels is obstructed, then it will affect every single part of the body, including organs, viscera, orifices, and sense organs. If the heart stops, the whole body will lose all of its function. The functions of the body follow the rhythm of the heart. Because the heart controls the vessels and contains the spirit, the two have a complex relationship. Blood is, blood is what allows the spirit to operate in the living animal, the Ling Shu chapter titled Nutritive and Protective Generation says, blood is the chi of the spirit. Heart blood is in the heart and harmonizes with the vessels, transporting the fluids of the heart. Heart blood, when robust, can transform into spirit and nurture spirit allowing the spirit to be full and not wavering. At this time, the heart spirit will be clear and bright and drive the chi, adjusting the movement of the heart blood and nurturing the entire body, five organs, six viscera, the limbs, and the sense organs. The physiological characteristic of the heart is that as a yang organ, it governs perception. The heart is located in the chest center, and in the five elements is fire. It is yang within yang, and thus is called the fire organ, or the yang organ. The nature of fire is brightness. It illuminates all things. The heart is a yang organ and fire organ. Its governing law is in illuminating consciousness, and it uses yang qi to do so. The heart yang qi pushes forward the movement of the heart, warming the entire body and all of the vessels and blood, stimulating the vitality and making the natural systems of the body continue to work without stop. The heart governs perception, means that the heart fills the vessels of the body, making it so that the spirit is clear and bright. The heart vessels are connected and smooth and allows the yang qi of the heart to obtain its use. It also allows the heart yin to calm and smooth the body and allow people to become peaceful and still. The heart yang and the heart yin adjust one another. The heart movement is adjusted in this process and its speed is normalized. The cardiovascular system is open and natural and the heart blood passes effortlessly through the whole body. The heart spirit is clear and bright. It requires the heart yang to move so that it becomes stimulated. It also requires the heart yin to control its suppressive and calming functions. The heart yang goes forth and allows people to engage in movement which is controlled by their minds. It makes people's energy lively and spirits awake. The spirit is able to focus on various things, and thoughts are alert. The heart yin governs stillness and quiet, and can control and stop excess mental activity. Heart yang adjusts the heart yin and allows the vitality, 
to be contained within. This way it will not scatter everywhere and will not stagnate. Because of this, the ancients said that the heart was like the sun. During the Qing Dynasty, the text, True Transmission of Medicine, Headache Chapter, says, People are a combination of heaven and earth. The heavens have the sun. People also have the sun. It is the prince of fire, which is the yang sun. In the discussion of blood conditions, Tang Zonghai said, The heart is the fire organ. It illuminates all things. Practically speaking, the use of yang qi to adjust the heart. The heart yang warms and connects the blood in channels, controls excitatory impulses, and does everything which the heart yin does not do. If the heart yang is insufficient, it will cause the heart to be lost in the body. This can slow the movement of blood and lead to stagnation. If the heart yin is insufficient, it will cause... It will cause loss of calmness and tranquility and can cause blood circulation to accelerate and mental deficiency and hyperactivity. Part three, relationship to body, orifice, psychology, fluid, and time. In the body, it is the convergence of the vessels. Its essence is expressed in the face. Heart converges the vessels of the body which indicates that the whole body and all blood and vessels all connect to the heart. The heart also controls them and is reflected in the complexion. This means that the heart's essence and chi can flourish or decline, and that it's possible to view this on the surface of the face. By observing the exterior, we can see the interior, which is to say that the interior organs and viscera can be observed in the face regardless of their relative state of flourishing, decline, strength, or weakness. Looking at the face, we can see that there are many vessels. The chi of the whole body travels to the head and the essence and chi of the heart. When prosperous or in decline, can be seen in the change of the tone of the color of the face. The pathogenic chi of organ and viscera diseases, chapter of spiritual pivot says, the 12 meridians and vessels and 365 collaterals all gather on the head and leave the empty orifices. When the heart is flourishing, the blood vessels are full and the face is a ruddy and moist color of red. If the heart chi is insufficient, the color will be barren and white, dark and sluggish. If the heart blood is vacuous, the face will be without brightness. If the heart blood is impeded, the face will be green and purple. If the heart fire is aggressive, the face will become red and purple. If the heart yang is in the process of abandonment, the face will be bright white or ashen. Thus, the Simple Questions Chapter 5 Elements Generation says, the heart gathers the vessels, when they are flourishing, there is color in the face. In the orifices, it is the tongue. The heart opens in the tongue, and the tongue is the sense organ of the heart. This means that the heart's essence and chi, if prosperous or in decline, will cause transformation and can manifest in the tongue. Thus, when we observe the tongue, we can understand the relative health of the heart and the blood and vessels, as well as the spirit. The tongue opening in the heart has four key factors. One, the heart connects to the tongue through the vessels, veins, and arteries. The spiritual pivot article on the circulatory system says, the lesser yin moves through the center of the heart and is the root of the tongue. The heart, blood, and vessels are the root of the many tongue vessels. The color of the tongue reflects this. The tongue has the ability to taste. The heart rules the vessels and the chi of the heart connects to the tongue via the vascular system, allowing it to differentiate the five tastes. Thus, the spiritual pivot vessel differentiation chapter says, The heart chi connects to the tongue. 
the heart harmonizes with the tongue so it can know the five tastes. The tongue can speak and it allows sound to be produced. The body of the tongue can move in speech, allowing the spirit of the heart to express itself in words. In the orifices, it is the tongue. To summarize the material above, the heart and tongue have a complex and profound relationship. The heart governs blood and contains the spirit. When the spirit is working properly, the tongue will be red and slightly moist. It will be soft and move freely. Taste will be normal and lively, and speech will be fluent. If the heart is ill, the tongue may be impeded and will reflect the heart. If the blood is insufficient, the tongue will be thin and white. Thin and brittle. If the heart fire is rising, the tongue will be red and have ulcers. If there is heart blood stasis, the tongue will be purple and dark, or there will be stasis veins on its bottom. If the heart's governing of the spirit is abnormal, the tongue will become hard and speech will be erratic, or speech may even be lost. The root of the tongue is in the mouth and is one of the sensory apparatus of the body. It is not an office like the ears, mouth, nose, and eyes. <coughs> so it performs a different function than those organs. The heart is the root and it is the office. Simple Questions says, the south is red, it enters the heart, its portal is in the ears. This is saying that the sound entering the ears is directly related to the function of the spirit of the heart. Aside from this, the tongue also shows activity of the spleen, liver, kidney, and other organs. In this regard, the heart must always be viewed as being together with the other organs and viscera in its function. In the mind, it is affection. The mental aspect of the heart is affection. This means the heart is the base of affectionate feeling. The Simple Questions chapter, Yin and Yang, Mutual Resonance Great Discussion says, in the five organs, the heart contains affection. Affection can usually be said to be related to our perception of things in the outside world. Affectionate joy always stimulates the activity of the heart. So Simple Questions says, affection harmonizes the qi, and assists the nutritive and defensive chi. However, affection and joy can also cause injury. And the Ling Shu chapter, Ben Shen, says affection and joy can cause scattering, making it so that the heart cannot contain. From the perspective of the analysis of the emotions, it is important not to be in excess or deficiency. If the essence and spirit are disturbed, people may laugh without stop. If there is depression, people may easily feel sorrowful. The Simple Questions chapter adjusting the Meridian's discussion says, the spirit, if in excess, causes people to laugh without stop. If in deficit, people will easily feel great sorrow. Aside from this, the heart governs perception, so excess joy will injure the heart and can cause the five aspects of the mind to be in excess, going on to injure and deplete the heart's spirit. Thus, the spiritual pivot chapter, Pathogenic Qi in Organ and Viscera Diseases, says, anger, worry, fear, and dread all damage the heart. Its fluid is sweat. Sweat is one of the five fluids. After Jin and Ye fluids are steamed by Yang Qi, the follicles of the channels open on the external channel and re external body and release sweat. 
The simple questions yin and yang differentiation discussion says, when yang is added to yin, it causes sweat. The heart's fluid is sweat. This refers to the essence of the heart. The heart, blood, and sweat come from one origin. The spiritual pivot hive organs generation chapter says, the five organs create fluid in the heart it is sweat. The sweat is created and is excreted from the heart blood. It has a very important relationship with this and spirit. The heart governs the blood and vessels. The blood and vessels have the same origin as jinn and yet fluids and mutually transform. The heart blood has water yet fluid, which emerges to become jinn fluid. The jinn fluid emerges as sweat from this origin. The heart blood, if full, will allow for the jinya to be sufficient. Sweat will transform from this origin and can make the skin smooth. It can also help the body to excrete toxins, allowing the metabolism to be healthy. When the sweat comes out in excess, the jinya will be injured greatly and it will waste the essence of the heart. The heart blood may become sparse, leading to palpitations. This is why it is said blood and sweat are from one origin, and sweat is the fluid of the heart. The heart contains the spirit, and the sweat comes out as a result of the guidance of the spirit. The heart spirit is clear and bright. It perceives all things outside the body, the, and causes sweat to emerge. This allows the body to adjust itself relative to the external climate in order to become harmonious with the natural world around it. Thus, when we are nervous, we move a lot. Or when we are overworked and the times are hot, we will find that sweat is quite obvious. When we're afraid, it damages the heart spirit and can also cause considerable sweat to emerge. The Simple Questions chapter on differentiating the meridians says, surprise displaces the essence. It causes sweat to emerge from the heart. It can also be seen that since the heart governs the blood and vessels and contains the spirit as its basis, its excretion of sweat is what allows the body to properly attune these features with the natural environment. It can also be said that the yang qi transforms the jing essence, and this ultimately arrives at sweat being excreted and causing the heart to lose either qi or yang. Great sweat will ultimately waste heart qi. The heart yang will be abandoned, causing the collapse of yang. In the seasons is the connection to the energy of summer. The five organs naturally adjust themselves to be in harmony with the yin and yang of the four times and the four seasons. The heart is governed by summer. The heart's chi connects with the chi of summer and because the natural world in summer tends toward that, tends toward heat, the human heart is situated such that it is the fire organ and the greatest source of yang qi in the body. These two energies come together in the, sum, in the summer and the heart are connected in their energy. Within the body, the yang qi follows the natural movement and the rise and fall of yin and yang with the natural change of the season. Summer is the time when people's yang is the greatest and is the time of the greatest luminescence of the life system. From the perspective of the five organs, the heart is yang in the center of yang and fire. This is why the heart yang brightness is in summer. Normally, if the heart becomes ill, the heart yang becomes weak and in peril. This type of illness can be cured in the summer and the illness may become less serious. When yin is empty and yang is flourishing in the heart's illness and emotional illness may become worse in summer. 
The simple questions say, when yang dominates the body becomes hot. It can be winter, it cannot be summer. From the perspective of prevention, Chinese medicine's health preservation arts tend to focus on adjusting the body and heart at the right time. In the three summer months, sleep late and wake up early. Do not sleep during day, daylight. We should also extend our time spent outside in order to allow ourselves to properly integrate the yang of the heart with the natural environment's flourishing. This way, the heart will get the greatest benefit from being regulated by the natural environment and will increase in its life function. From the perspective of treating illness, Chinese medicine suggests that winter illnesses may be treated in the summer. If yang is vacuous, the heart is called water flaring and is most effectively dealt with in the summer months when the heart fire can be used. It is possible to adjust the interior by increasing the yang chi of the exterior. Attached to the pericardium collateral. The pericardium collateral is also called the pericardium and the shan zhong. It is the exterior wrapper of the heart and protects the heart. This channel is in the classics and is called the jui yin pericardium channel of the hand. It is the interior aspect of the triple energy energizer, lesser yang meridian of the hand. Thus it qualifies as a zang or storage organ. Ancient Chinese medicine believed that people's hearts are the princes of their bodies and that they must not come into contact with evil. Therefore, when e external evil attacks the heart, the pericardium will protect it and become ill first, and then the pericardium will replace the heart in illness. In the spiritual pivot chapter on the evil guest, it says, the heart is the ruler of the five organs and six viscera. It is the home of vitality. When, the, when this heart is strong and full, evil will not enter. If it becomes soft, evil will injure the heart. If the heart is injured, the spirit will leave. If the spirit leaves, the person will die. All evils in the heart must first pass the pericardium collateral. Later in the Ming and Qing dynasties, it was said, the heart does not accept evil. This was exposed in the discussion of warm diseases and described how illnesses cause the spirit to become clouded and speech to become inhibited. This comes from the loss of function of the spirit in the heart and was called heat entering the pericardium or hot phlegm damages the pericardium. Practically speaking, the pericardium, when encountering pathogens and becoming ill, is essentially the same as the heart becoming ill. The heart is the same as the other organs. It can be attacked by evil pathogens. In summary, what is the heart in Chinese medicine? Anatomy. Its shape is round with a pointed bottom. It looks like a lotus which is not yet bloomed. Physiological function. It controls the blood and vessels and contains the spirit. Physiological characteristics. It is a yang organ. It controls perception. Physical body and orifices. In the body, it connects to the vessels. The heart governs the vessels. Its essence is expressed in the face. Orifices. It opens in the tongue. Emotion. In the mind, it is expressed as affection. Body fluids. Its fluid is sweat. Channels and collaterals the lesser yin heart channel of the hand. External and internal connections. It connects to the greater yang small intestine meridian of the hand, which serves as the exterior while the heart serves as the interior. Nature of yin and yang. In the five elements, it is fire, yang within yang. Connection to the natural world. Its energy connects with summer. External, the pericardium channel element in the Chinese medicine model of physiology. 
2,000 years ago, the ancient thinkers of China wrote the Yellow Emperor's Internal Classic, in which they established and developed the concept of the physiology and function of the heart. They used this to dictate the manner in which they engaged in medicine and therapy and set down a model by which we operate today. Okay, today's class is over. Let's try to make sure to remember the following points about the heart in Chinese medicine. The heart is open and shaped like a lotus, which is about to bloom. It controls blood and vessels. It contains the spirit. It is a yang organ. It controls perception. Its essence is expressed in the face. It opens in the tongue. Its mental aspect is affection. Its fluid is sweat. The lesser yin heart meridian of the hand and the greater yang large inte small intestine meridian of the hand are its major inner and outer aspects. In the five elements, it is fire. It connects with the energy of summer. It is yang within yang, and externally it is protected by the pericardium collateral. Thanks for watching.